Delight. I'm Chrissy Wozniak. My guest today is the founder and executive chairman of Ericent. Ericent helps its customers meet the challenges of managing IT network assets and cybersecurity in today's complex and evolving IT environments, reducing audit and security risks, establishing more efficient asset management process. Ericent's client base includes some of the world's largest corporate and government networks in IT environments, such as USPS, Visa, US Air Force, British Ministry of Defense, and dozens of Fortune 500 companies rely on Ericent solutions to manage and protect their networks. So as I'm sure you've noticed by now, this doesn't sound like an agriculturally centered guest, but in today's world, cybersecurity affects all of us, and the ag industry is no exception. We're going to talk today about cybersecurity within the food supply chain, like what happened recently uh, with the JBS breach. From Regalsville, Pennsylvania, I would like to welcome Walt Zavlowski. Thank you, Walt, and thank you so much for your time today. Oh, great, great. I really, in, I'm really going to enjoy this participating. Thank you very much for asking me to join you. Yeah. So first of all, would you give me a little bit about your own background? Okay. My background initially was in nuclear engineering. And then in 1996, I started a software company and I focused in on something very important for most companies, and that's defining their networks. People, every company has a network, but over the years they've grown and they've lost control over what they have, what software they have, what machines what they have. So what I did is I developed software that would go out and define what it is that they had. And this way you have a database and this way you can manage the IT network. And IT networks are very, very similar from one company to another. A bank, a beef processing facility, they all share the same computers. They work essentially the same. There are little details that are different. One handles beef, one handles money. Right. But other than that, there's not much of a difference. And as and people really have not been all that concerned about cybersecurity, whether right. you're a bank or whether you're a beef processing facility, because up until a few years ago, the hackers weren't that ambitious. Okay, you, you, they would send you an email, they would try to do something funny, but they wouldn't try to wipe you out. Right. And that's what's happening today. Today, cybersecurity and hackers have a business. A beef company can be in beef, a hacking company is in hacking. They have project managers, they have office hours, they have buildings, they have sales goals just like any other business, except their primary clients are you and me. You know, trying to get as much money as they can out of us into their pockets. Yeah, that makes sense. So so tell me about Arison then. Like, what does the company do and okay. how do you go about doing it? Oh, let me get turn this stupid telephone off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. But primarily what we do is we gather data about the network and then we used the data that we discover, the machines, to come up with a solution, say, for cybersecurity or managing your assets. I guess it's a term that you can't measure or you can't manage what you can't measure. Right. You can't manage your cybersecurity if you don't know what you have. Well, just think about this, right? You have a house. And if you were to call ADT security and say, I need a cyber uh, I need a system, a security system for my house, they would ask you, how many, tell me about your house. How, how big is it? How many doors do you have? How many windows? What if your answer in every case was, I don't know? Chrissy, how many windows do you have? I don't know. How many doors? I don't know. What kind of security system could they give you nothing mm -hmm. nothing it's your job to tell them i have 14 windows these are my rooms i'm trying to protect my protect my jewelry collection i have bars of gold in the basement i need to protect those if you have no idea what you're trying to protect how many computers you have 
Well, then guess what? Call the hackers. They will tell you what you have. Good point. They will tell you the software that you have. They will tell you how many computers you, you have. They will tell you which computers they have accounts on and when they intend to put the screws to you. So didn't they pay like an $11 million ransom? Yeah, yeah that's what. Do you know what the hacking company did? No. Received that check or that transfer? They hired a hundred more developers, a hundred hackers. They, yeah. The owners probably bought a, a Ferrari. They probably got a bigger house, mm -hmm. seven or eight or $9 million left over. They hired more people. Right. And those more people are going to attack other companies. And it's easy. We just heard recently where the uh, White House was hacked and also the Marshall Service was hacked. Have you, you must have heard about that. Yes, yes. Just think about this. How insane is that? The federal government spends billions of dollars on cybersecurity, billions, and they get hacked. Right. So, so how is a, a, a small company that... Is, is trying just to get by, not going to get hacked. Everybody's going to get hacked. If the NSA can get hacked, the NSA, for God's sakes, yes. <laughs> yes. The, the super, oh my God, smart people, they get hacked. Yeah, the that's it. gets hacked. You see, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to and protect us and you get hacked. How does that make any sense? No, and we're we're living in this world right now that's just overwhelmingly complex, but so alarmingly simple at the same time. Exactly like, right. It's one it's corrupted file, complex, but it's simple. It's simple mm -hmm. in its complexity. Look at this. You and I are talking over Zoom. It's simple. Now the complexity. I'm sure Zoom is pretty complex program, but the end is fairly simple. Mm -hmm. Cybersecurity is the same way. It's simple. But you have to figure out how many computers you have. Right. And with most companies, that's where the problem lies. They can't tell you. And some cybersecurity vendor will come and tell them that they don't need to have that information because their tool, which is being developed and will be released a month from now, will solve all their problems. Right. So they say, well... We could take it easy for the next month. Nobody's going to attack us. And when we buy this tool for $10 million, it's going to solve all our problems. And when they get hacked and they call the vendor, they say, what happened? We got hacked. And the vendor will say, everybody gets hacked. But I've got this new tool, which I'm releasing in two months. It's got artificial intelligence. And the client says, oh, my gosh, when they release that tool, we won't get hacked anymore. They buy the tool. They install the tool. They get hacked. They call up the vendor. This cycle keeps going on and on. It's yeah. been going on and on for the last 30 years. Right. Of tools hacked, tools hacked, tools. It's a multi-billion dollar business. Wow. Now, the president, President Biden, came up with an executive order last year and he told everybody the answer. The answer is to design cybersecurity. He, he implemented two items, the zero trust architecture and, side, and a supply chain management process for software. Right. Folks are sort of ignoring it. Okay. Because it requires a little bit of work. And they're waiting for that magic tool that maybe the Martian UFO people will deliver, but it's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. And they, what they really need to do is get themselves together, follow the president's advice, and impose what they call a zero trust and an SBOM or supply chain management process for software. So what does that mean? Can you break that down? Oh, yeah, very simple. Yeah. Okay. When you buy software, the software 
ultimately will have vulnerabilities. Mm-hmm. And you could, and the software manufacturer will send you updates. And if, for example, Microsoft on your own computer, you'll get mm-hmm. constant updates, right? You try to sort of set off your computer and the computer says, not so fast, I have to update. And it's going to take me 20 minutes to update. So you walk away and 20 minutes later, the computer is shut down and it's been updated. Those are cybersecurity patches that they're adding. Most software that's being sold is what's called uh, open source software. The companies that sell software, like a Microsoft, like an Oracle, or even agricultural programs, a lot of their software contains free open source software. Okay. So the developers, the guys that code, you know, to write, do the coding, they will go and say, okay, I need, I need a certain, uh, as an example, if I say to you log4j, that was a major uh, hack a few years ago. Does that mean anything? Log4j? No. No. It's like, it's just like, okay. If you're writing a program in the Java language, and that's just a regular Java language. People use Java all the time. Mm -hmm. In their program, they would like to have a logging function. And the logging function watches what the program does and writes to a file issue things that happen. If there's an error in the program, the program, if it's well written, will jump over the error, but it will write something down. So a developer who's doing writing a Java application will say, I need a logging program, a little notepad, of, so it will automatically write everything what I need. So the log for Java applications is called log4j. Oh, okay. It's a logging function for Java applications. It's a free piece of software. It's free. If you were a Java developer, you go to a website, you grab that code, you put it into your program, everybody's happy. They have a logging function. But the hackers are pretty smart. They hacked log, the log4j functionality. They, okay. they went to that program, they modified it. So when the developer grabbed it, he grabbed bad software. Mm. Oh, okay. Puts it into the product, doesn't tell anybody that that library or that functionality comes from log4j and everybody's using the program. They hear that, oh, log4j has got a problem, but they don't know that it's in their software they don't know so the president ordered something called an s bomb sounds very like a bar the s bomb yes. the s bomb <laughs> is software bill of materials hmm. you have to tell your clients what open source libraries you used so wow. that they know what you used to build your program just like the ingredients on the side of a bag of fertilizer. It says what's in there. Yeah. It has to be complete. Right. It can't that say it's 40% complete my information. The other information we don't know about. No, mm-hmm. you have to give the consumer all the information that they need. So the, the supply chain for software has been sort of modified so that When you buy software, you have to be told about the ingredients in the software. So if there's an issue with the ingredients, you can withdraw that software or fix those ingredients. And so the supply chain for software has been modified. And thanks to President Biden, it was very, very good. It was a very good thing that he did. Mm -hmm. And then another thing that he ordered in the same executive order was the concept of what we call zero trust. Mm -hmm. Zero trust means that you assume that your network is full of bad guys. Hmm. Because it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) It's not one bad guy. It's a hundred bad guys. Because every little operation 
in all these different countries that are hackers, they'll go into a major company and they try to hack in. But it's, they're not by themselves. There's another guy and another guy and another company. They're all trying to get in. And what they try to do is set up an account on somebody's computer. That's right. all they're trying to do. Wow. And they do it very carefully, very quietly. All of a sudden, you have a visitor on your account, and they're smart enough to use the Microsoft mm -hmm. function that'll hide the account. Right. Okay? No problem at all. They'll just hide the account. Huh. So you don't know it's there. So you're in a company, you're working on your computer. There's a, you have a visitor on your account. When you're not using the computer, they're using the computer, except they're going to use your credentials. But they're already on the network. They could figure out what your passwords and logins are for the other applications. And they mm -hmm. go in and they take some data, they do a money transfer. They do whatever it is that they want to do. Now, most companies, these hacking companies, don't want to kill you. Mm -hmm. They want to know what you can afford to pay. But they know what you can afford to pay. The company that paid the $11 million, it's because the hackers knew how much money they had in their accounts and how much they could afford to pay. Because... If I had you, Chrissy, and I said, okay, pay me a million dollars, I say, Chrissy may not be able to give me a million dollars tomorrow, but a hundred thousand, we're talking, okay? Right. <laughs> now, wow. if I hack into um, Bill Gates's account, mm -hmm. I'm not talking a hundred thousand dollars, he can <laughs> pay me $50 million, right? Wow. So the hackers know what you have in your bank account. The hackers know who your lawyer is. The hackers know who your accountant is. The hackers know all of this stuff because they've been on your account for the last year. And it's not one, it's two, three, four, five, six, seven. So under the president's executive order, what they're talking about is you establish an architecture of your networks and all that, that assumes mm -hmm. that you have hackers and you design the system in such a way that it doesn't matter. They could be there, but they won't be able to go anywhere or do anything because you put in better access control. You make sure that you, for example, if you have no reason to go into, into the money transfer department, you don't get there. You design a system that assumes that you have bad guys. Just like, for example, you could design a system assuming that somebody's in your basement and crawling around, you say, okay, fine, I could design a system that will put motion detectors in the basement. Mm -hmm. Or if they go into through the attic, I'll design a system that will make sure my attic is protected. So you have to design a cybersecurity system. You can't wait for the next magic piece of software. Right. Most that, companies wow, yeah. are waiting for the next magic piece of software that will never come. So okay. what the president said is zero trust, which assumes that you have people on your network, design around them, which is very easy to do. Nothing is hard. And the, tell everybody what software you're using when you sell an application. The, the, your ingredients in the software and assume you're, you're hacked. Work around it. You can do it because you can have better identity control. So when you go into a sensitive area, first of all, you may not be allowed to go into there because there's no need for you to be there. But if you're there, verify that when you come in, it is really you and not some hacker that is spoofing you. Right. And they're very good at that. So there is a solution, but the solution is a little bit of hard work. And don't wait for the new thing that's going to happen. The Martians aren't going to save us. We're not going to have any ma magic mushrooms, magic pill. They don't exist. Yeah. It requires a little bit of work. And having the software that allows you to manage correctly. And that's what, well, in a way, that's what Ericsson's all about. We give you the, the process, a 
work, a way of working, and how to get to the point where you're sufficiently secure and you constantly measure, you manage it, you measure, you manage, you measure, you manage, and you know who's responsible for the various activities. And you make sure that they do their activities. And when Mary goes on vacation, her activity is covered by somebody else. So you're always working to protect your systems. Right. And this way you don't send somebody $11 million, which allows them to get 100 new developers on their staff and really give it to you. <laughs> I guess. Because, because that money did not go for 10 Ferraris. No. Mm -hmm. It went for a few Ferraris, maybe. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then let's but make more money. Building up the business yeah. because they can even make more money. Wow. The answer is follow the president's guidelines, mm -hmm. but take them to heart and be serious about it. It's yeah. not hard. It's maybe hard work. It's maybe a little bit of extra effort, but it's doable and it's logical. Mm -hmm. And it will prevent the hackers from destroying your company or your organization or your de department because it will work. And eventually, you yourself will be so hard to, to attack, they'll find somebody easier. They'll be an easier company to destroy than your company because your company is well protected. If you have a super cybersecurity system or a super building security system, the burglars will not bother you. They'll go next door to a guy that has nothing and steal from him. Mm -hmm. Why work so hard? They don't want to work that hard. They want to work nice and easy and make some money. Yeah. Remember, this, it's a business. It's a big business of hacking. It's not little guys sitting in basements. Right. It's hundreds of people in a building with project managers, with wow. with with, uh, what do you call, goals, with, uh, uh, what do you call those things where, you you know, sales sales quotas, and they'll say, wow. how much money you do you You don't bring? see that in your head when you think about a hacker. You think of a teenager in the, you're right, in the no, basement. No, no, no. They, they, they have project management. They, okay, the guy says, how are we doing with General Motors? Oh, we got 17 accounts at General Motors. This is our plan for General, General Motors. We have a year plan. We plan to hit them here, here, and here. Great. What are you doing? Uh, Baptist Healthcare. We have a great plan for Baptist Healthcare. Okay, we have a new guy. We want to get into the U.S. Air Force version of this. Okay, what are we going to do there? They have meetings. They have goals. They have bonuses. They have everything. It's a big business. Yeah. Wow. It's not a little kid sitting in the basement at all. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, that, that kind of blows my mind. <laughs> but for the, the end consumer, they can protect themselves mm -hmm. because they're going to get hacked because here's an example. Let's assume they're buying a house. The hackers know you're buying a house. They know who your attorney is. They know who your realtor is. They know the full transaction. They know everybody's email address. When an attorney calls you up and says, okay, closing is next week. You need to wire me the $100,000 down payment. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And make it 101,000 because we're going to need 100,000 at closing. You go ahead and do it. Yeah. And then you call up the attorney and say, well, did you get my money? And he'll say, what money? And some hacker knew your, and then if you start looking, you'll see, oh my God, look at this. The email of the attorney is one letter off. It's not Joey McGovern, it's Joey McGovern. And the realtor's at a email address is one letter off. They wow. set up phony email accounts, phony this account. They set up an account at Bank of America to receive the money. They do all of this, hoping that they can convince you to wire the money to that, that account. They get the money. They're gone. You call up the FBI, and they'll say, how much money is involved? You say $100,000, a lot of money. Sorry, anything less than half a million we don't get involved in. No way. Wow. Yeah. They say, go to your yeah. local police. Okay. 
So you go to your local police and you say, I've been hacked for $100,000. They say, hmm, go to the county prosecutor. They may have a prosecutor that deals with these crimes. You go to the county prosecutor and he'll say, ah, too bad for you. Do you know how many stories like this I hear every day? No way. Wow. And you say, oh my God, I lost a hundred thousand bucks. I can't buy the house. No, too bad. Yeah. And that happens all the time, every day. Call up a lawyer, call up a real estate people and say it happens all the time. Wow. And these people know everything about you. Yeah. Wow. Makes you want to go live under a rock. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> By the nicest rock you can. And <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but they control the rock. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So where can people find help? Where can they find you? And um, like you said, you have products that you offer for um, for companies too. So That's where right. do they start? We'll talk to anybody. You just go to www.eracent or give me a call. My phone number is 908-310-5916. So if they go to www.eracent.com, they'll see my picture. They'll see our companies. They could send me a letter and go to their post office because the post office is using our software. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. That's right. The post office is using our software. Uh, lots of companies are using our software. Yeah. One of our, one of our most interesting is the British Ministry of Defense. That's right. pretty classic. James that Moore. is, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. With the king now and everything, so that's like a pretty, pretty classy operation. That is. Yeah, so a lot of big companies use our software, but I'm very happy with the post office because they're using a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. And one last question for you. So, why do you serve in this way? This is an amazing thing that you that you do to try to protect people and protect companies. What's your greatest passion in all of this? Well, it's just that it's very interesting, and I yeah. know it can be done, and we've been doing it for the, lo for the longest time. So, mm -hmm. it, it, uh, you know, we, and the thing is, we always work with extremely large companies, and rarely do we work with small companies. Mm -hmm. But uh, a small company, large company, everybody can use the product. Right. And it's just interesting. But what really bugs me is that you have all these hacks because people just just don't do what they should be doing. And I was very happy when the president suggested an answer. And it bothers me that people aren't taking that to heart. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. Well, I'm happy to spread the word. <laughs> and uh, hopefully our audience, you know, starts taking some steps to keep keep themselves more protected. And, and I love, like that having a plan in case things do go bad. You know what to do Correct. in that case. Yeah. That's right. Oh, he, he could have brought a little generator to that office. Yeah. Plugged it into their outlet. They would have fired up their computer, got online, did That's everything, true. and you would have been okay. That's what I need to do. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you, actually, they, they sell these now these batteries that are the size of a brick that could start your car, but you could plug into it and run your house for a few minutes and get everything going. Wow. So yeah, I think I need to do something like it's that. It's always a simple answer to every problem. But the thing is, yeah. how many answers can you run around with? It's just too much. It's yeah. Okay. For good. sure. Well, well Chris, thank it was you. very nice talking to you. Yes, thank you so much for all of your insight. And thanks to all who are watching or listening. If you want to learn more, all the links are provided in the show notes. And don't forget to subscribe to North American Egg Spotlight on YouTube, Rumble, Telegram, or Egg Fuse channels. And the podcast is available on Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Have a great day. Bye.